Hello, today I wanna to quickly go over some PCOS nutrition facts that will either help you lose weight or just manage your PCOS if you're already at your goal weight. So if you're a lean person with PCOS and you feel like nutrition advice kind of leaves you out of the picture, this advice won't, but it will also help you if losing weight is a primary goal for you. So let's get into it. Number one is calories matter. Um, whether you're trying to lose weight or not, you need to be eating the appropriate amount of calories for your goal. I have never come across a PCOS diet in the research where weight loss was achieved without calorie restriction, without being hypocaloric. Now, that means that also if you, um, if you have lean PCOS and you don't want to lose weight, you should pay attention to how many calories you're eating so you're not in a hypocaloric state below your daily energy needs. Now, you do not have to count calories, although that can be helpful at times, to learn how to eat below your calorie needs to lose weight or to eat at your needs to maintain your weight. If you go to my comments below, I have a downloadable guide for you that gets into some of the finer points of hunger awareness and how to learn to start regulating your portion control and your consumption based off some simple lifestyle tips rather than numbers and calculators. Okay, number two, eating more protein will serve you well if you have PCOS. If you're trying to lose weight, this is particularly important because it's going to help you maintain muscle mass. If you lose muscle mass while you are dieting, which most people do inevitably, um, it will kind of back you into a metabolic corner and force you into a plateau. If you look at the link above, this is my video on plateaus and I explain that in detail. So just 30% of your calories in um, your diet or maybe like a quarter of your plate uh, being a protein dense food is enough to satisfy that requirement. And not only is it important for weight loss, but it's also important for managing one of the root causes of many PCOS symptoms, which is intrinsic insulin resistance. So we tend to have, as women with PCOS, we tend to have better energy levels um, and we tend to have clearer skin, healthier hair, everything, if we're eating a diet that um, reduces insulin resistance, whether we're lean or not. Okay, number three, or number three, right, is carbohydrates. Oh, so we could talk about carbs and PCOS forever, right? Um, so basically, when you look at all the different types of diets they've researched on PCOS, and most of them, they perform about the same. So that's actually another bonus fact. There's a lot of different diets that work for PCOS, according to the research. But most of them involve high quality carbohydrates versus low quality carbohydrates. So we're talking about sometimes they're called low GI carbohydrates, but I just like to view them as whole food carbohydrates. So these are plants, root vegetables and intact whole grains like oats, uh, brown rice, uh, quinoa. Um, those are the kinds of carbs that you should be eating fruit is another healthy carb for PCOS. Um, so whether or not you're trying to lose weight, selecting mostly high quality whole food carbs is going to benefit you, both your skin, your mood, your hair. It's going to help with your insulin resistant, it's resistance and your gut health. So eating low quality carbohydrates um, can cause you to have poor gut health, which is a problem, it seems like, in women with PCOS. And though we don't know all of the like, connections to that, it seems as though poor gut health is contributing to inflammation in women with PCOS and um, thus making our symptoms more problematic. So eating high quality carbohydrates versus lower quality carbohydrates will also improve your gut health, gut health and inflammation. Okay, so now I think we're on to number four, which is that this concept that food allergies are um, common among PCOS women or that there's one type of food allergy or food that we should all be avoiding, that is speculation. That's not a fact. There's just no proof of that. That's not to say that you might not have a food sensitivity that is causing you to be less healthy. You may have a sensitivity to gluten. 
you might have a sensitivity to dairy. You might have a sensitivity to eggs or soy. Um, but that is an individualized factor. That is not something that has a one size fits all protocol for women with PCOS. There are some blood tests out there to check for um, food sensitivities, but they kind of suck. Um, <laughs> I wish that they were better than they are, and I think someday that they will be. The research will keep evolving, but right now they're pretty inaccurate. So one of the best ways to figure out whether or not you have a food intolerance is to just simply cut out the food for at least six weeks and see if stuff gets better. <laughs> I wish it were easier than that. I wish there was a test and I think eventually we're going to get there. But right now, most of the tests are pretty inaccurate, especially if you're reading them yourself and not um, going to a qualified health practitioner to read them. Okay. And then the final tip is that restricting your feeding window might be a good strategy for improving a lot of PCOS issues. And so what that would involve is just um, a popular term is intermittent fasting. And there's all different ways that you can do this, but just simply limiting the time that you will eat your meals to 12 or 13 hours out of your day is a wise choice. And it seems like it's better to start your feeding window, so to speak, in the morning and end it earlier in the evening. That seems to be correlated with a better insulin response, which again, no matter what type of PC, you know, no matter whether you're trying to lose weight or not, that is part of your goal. So obviously, if you're cutting off the times that you're eating during the day, it's gonna make it easier for you to control the calories you consume, but also you're going to be protecting your gut health and by starting that feeding window earlier in the morning, you're also kind of bolstering your natural circadian rhythms, which seems to help women with PCOS if we sort of do most of our living during the daylight hours and then rest and unwind in the evening and maybe stop eating. I think a good reasonable goal for starting out with this for anyone is just to try to start with 12 hour fasting window. So maybe you eat breakfast at 8 a.m. and you finish dinner before 8 p.m and work your way towards 13 hours. So maybe eventually you get it so that you're eating breakfast at 8 a.m. and you're finishing dinner at 7 p.m. and you're not eating again until breakfast the next morning. So giving yourself a full 13 hours. I think that's a, a nice place to start and see if that helps with your health. Okay, so those are your facts. Calories matter. Protein helps with your health. High quality carbohydrates matter for your gut health and insulin resistance. Food allergies are individualized and there's no one size fits all food sensitivity issue for women with PCOS. And um, restricting your feeding window, the time that you're eating could help with your hormones.